what each pieces is actually are as and okay, what you're actually doing like calculate those uh, prior likelihood and posterior. And uh, so this equation, you read this a couple of times probably already, like this morning, um, I'm going to introduce you the uh, ASU. Um, here's the blue data, the D colored in blue. This is our observation. You always have some data. And uh, the video is some prior piece data. And uh, we have some observations. We update our understanding on piece data uh, after uh, knowing this observation data. So, the is the uh, Bayes theorem. Um, the A here is a hypothesis. Like anything that is not written in the prior, that's the H. For example, you worked on an example that fits modeling line. And your prior are the slope and the intercept, so M and E. And your model H here, the assumption here is like a line model. So that's what H here. Uh, you should don't need to like worry about that. You already work with some assumption, some model. So uh, okay, that's the Bayes theorem. Right? Uh, look at your examples and apply this theorem to the examples. Uh, can you uh, tell you about three examples? One is draw both out of the bag. Uh, you learn this example many times, like when you learn probability and how do we do that in a Bayes way. And uh, observations with Gaussian noise, like when you model a line, instead of the mean value, you always have some noisy uh, noise on the right, uh, right direction, uh, the sigma here. So uh, how do we infer the mean? when they make observation with some function, noise, uh, sigma. And lastly, okay, the formal Bayesian way to fit uh, a straight line. Irregular, the maximum likelihood. Uh, this one, they were just like, okay, if we have the prior information, how do we put it all together? Uh, let's begin with problem one. Uh, draw balls out of back. Just think of this very intuitively uh, you don't need to remember the formula of the base. Uh, this whole thing is to be some equation. You have a bag with four balls, and there are two types of balls, like white balls and red balls. And we don't know how many balls there are. So there could be uh, five possible combinations. All four balls are uh, white balls, three black balls, one white balls, Two black balls, two white balls, one black ball, three white balls, no white, no black balls. So there are five combinations. What we need to do when we think of this problem in a basic, in a way is first to figure out how our data. Um, this is a bag of balls. Um, we make observations. The observation here will be draw balls of this bag, and we want to make uh, inferences on the number of like and white balls of this uh, bag. Okay, so the question, what are all the possible combinations of our uh, pressure interest data? There are five possible states, right? I just mentioned uh, those five possible states, which just call this theta. So we have a primary interest that the theta could have five possible states. That's like the step one. And if we have no prior knowledge on how many black balls and white balls in this bag, then we have an uninformative guess. So for five possible states of theta, we begin with some prior. This is, okay, a state, the probability uh, of each of the states. And an uninformative prior is just, okay, each state has a similar. Probability. Uh, if the total sum is one, then okay, for each state, the P theta is like 0.2. Does that all make sense? So now we make observations. All the observations in the slide are in blue. Those are like helpful information for us. We uh, make an uh, observation. They draw one ball out of this bag and we observe a black ball. 
So uh, immediately our information on the, on the number of light bulbs in the spec change, right? We make an, observe, make an observation of light bulbs. So what we could do next step is at each possible configuration, each possible state, we calculate the probability of drawing a black ball out of that state. So that's like conditional probability. So those are five possible states. And then we think of like what the probability of drawing a black ball at each state. If we have four white balls, then zero, right? Four white balls, I have zero probability to draw a black ball out of it. If it's four black balls, then the probability is one. All black balls. And now if we have like one black ball, three black balls, the probability is one out of four. We can do the similar calculation for all five states. And you may realize, okay, this is actually linear. It's like zero out of four about four, two out of four, three out of four, four out of four. So it's like zero and two, zero and two, three, four, like five states. What we are doing here is actually our legacy. We are calculating the probability of observing a black ball given each of the theta. So like that's an intuitive way to understand, okay, prior is just like prior knowledge on each of the states. And if we make an observation, this is our likelihood. If I actually plot this as a discrete distribution, this is because like P data given theta the uh, likelihood function. And then for each of the five states, okay, 0, 0.1, 0, uh, 0.25, 0.5, 0.75, 0.1. 0.5, Those are the, uh, our likelihood. And then what we need to do for the next step, okay, we want to, we draw a ball, we want to update our understanding on the theta, the number of black balls in the bag. So it's prior times the likelihood. That's our posterior. Okay, this is just the repeating the information. And let's take a look. Okay. Prior times likelihood. Prior is uniform here. And likelihood is this linear relation. And we cancel together. That's our updated understanding of the theta after an observation of the life. So how this do, what we do here is, okay, for each state, this is, so sorry, like, okay, four uh, white balls, sorry, except I didn't have one. For, okay, we take the value here, we times the value here, and then we get zero here, right? So like for the one black ball case, 22 here, 25 here, we calculate them. And the value here. So prior times by cases, they update our posterior. And we learned that, okay, the base theorem, there is always like a dominator. That's the normalization. So when we sum all of those posterior states, we want the total probability to be one. So we need to do some normalization. Okay, so now let's make the problem slightly more complicated. We make one draw that's a light bulb. Then we make another draw. So after the draw of the light bulb, we, our prior information is no longer like a slight prior, right? We made an observation. Okay, we now have some knowledge on the number of light bulbs in this bag. Now our prior, we can think of it as the posterior from the last bag. So we know, okay, we may come, we already made an observation. We know, okay, what might be the distribution of the number of light bulbs in the bag. And then we make another draw. Okay, in this time, it's a white ball. So if you think of the probability of drawing a white ball out of all the five uh, configurations, it will be the opposite of the uh, drawing of white ball, right? Instead of a positive slope, in this case, it'd be negative slope. So let's visualize this again. Now we have like, okay, this 
quite information is the output of drawing of light bulb. And now we, our observation is like drawing a light bulb, which is, okay, a nice one. And we end up something like this. So again, like you can do those, like I teach that you calculate prior as a state, times what food as a state, and you get the posterior as a state. And we can like, okay, there's a for loop, we write a for loop for five states to get the result. Yeah. Are you saying like the prior, the, the maximum level is one in the previous slide. Right, so um, here, like, you can, like, if it's unnormalized, then, like, what do I do? It is, doesn't really matter. If we actually think the prior as some normalized prior, then the total likelihood will be one. So, in that sense, it will be 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0. In total, it's one. So it's still like so it's linear, or like in total, like you add those numbers to be one. Yeah. So uh, now our posterior is something like this. Uh, I want to like you to discuss with your neighbor for a minute. Like that does make sense from our intuition. We have a we have bag of balls. We draw one one black ball and we draw another red ball. What's your, uh, yeah, what's your guess, even without this uh, Bayesian analysis at all? Should it be like, okay, do I expect equal number of light bulbs and light bulbs? Should it be symmetric or not? Like, just discuss with your neighbor for a minute. <laughs> Now, the question is, uh, if you if you draw um, one ball from from your back to four balls, and you get, and you see that it's fine, uh, but you know that like the the ball the bat is five balls, five balls. What? Example during the problem set session, 
and you will work on a uh, let's just get to this you will work on a study challenger version see uh, if we have a guy who is infinite number of posts and they may turn for us like this line six wide four wide what will be the poster in this case so uh, a reminder that like in the case we show like drop make two draws this is pretty much the same as they go back a uniform prior time so they're making two draws it's like a posterior where it is similar to the uniform gas making a black draw times making a make a draw of black balls times make a draw of white balls that's the likelihood so if they are like making 10 draws six are black then make times the likelihood of offering a white ball six times and then times for white balls make the likelihood of offering a white ball for four times you quickly find this is actually the binomial distribution this is yeah, you just solve the binomial distribution using your own probability. So, okay, that's like problem one, uh, a discrete example. And let's now work on like operations with Gaussian noise. That's uh, an example you saw earlier today when you are doing the line safety model. Uh, but like, again, we can use a bay and spade to uh, think about it. Let's say uh, we have primary interest of x. So don't confuse with x and y. Now x is just x. <laughs> <laughs> and they made an alteration of x, but the alteration is noisy. So instead of the true x value, x observed is being observed. So <laughs> it's a little bit confusing on wording, but like it, we observe x observed is x true plus some Gaussian noise is sigma and we know the value of sigma square here so what will be the biggest way to infer the true x again we begin with think of the theta the theta here is x we are interested in the value our primary interest theta is just x and what we can do okay first of all visualize our x let me just think of the uh, yeah, just a reminder of the data. Let's just think of the uh, x as a grid. X is one dimensional. Let's let's criticize it. Like let me make this as x true, and on each point on this axis, it can have some value. For example, negative one, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. So this is an axis of x. This is like similar to our configuration. So both and it's just like knowledge numbers. And then what our likelihood would be, okay, we have an operation like X, we observe one data point at X equal to minus one. What the Bayes, our likelihood in this case, the operation, the X observed given X true, we can evaluate uh, evaluate the likelihood at each possible value of the x. So on um, each grid of the x-axis, we can calculate okay what's the probability of, what's the probability of offering this x after. That's like okay for all the balls at each configuration, we calculate the probability of drawing a black hole. Now we are for each possible value of x, we are calculating the probability uh, of observing the x true, x observed. So I'm going to show some visualization that will help you understand a lot. So let's see, let's make our x true. Uh, divided our x true at uh, like at positive let's see, at one. So we have a normal distribution centered at uh, x equal to one. And the sigma uh, square variance, I just make it two. So what we are calculating here is the likelihood the author given some x true one sigma is the probability of observe x true on this positive distribution. So, okay, here is a normal distribution. We observe some value here. The probability very interesting is like, okay. 
see why why the word for while the i feels like it's true numbers you could minus but it's like really small tail the height of the tail if we like have this value okay that's 0.05 it's very unlike right so they evaluate the uh, probability of occurring this x tree for minus one for an x tree for one with sigma it's it's very unlike and then they can like do the same, same calculation for x true at different values. Sorry. If they have the x true, okay, now x true equal to zero, we have this same, we just have the same like function that shifted one you one uh, x equal to one back. And now okay, they evaluate the x true again. Is much higher probability of going to work. Okay, so what this uh, likelihood food is trying to calculate is just like a key operation today that given some parameter interest to x. And we can do the same, like x tree equal to ni ni uh, minus one, but okay, it takes like 0.4, and we can do the same calculation. For all the possible x trees. Right. So um, the whole thing here is just our relativity. And uh, you already learned this from your problem session earlier, like how to calculate this, um, how the, it's just like, okay, one line code in Python. For example, if our X true is like a grid that like divides to five with uh, 100 given the space to make a point. Then we can evaluate, okay, a normal distribution, the probability density function of X true, X after center for a normal distribution centered at X true based on no variables. Does this exactly make sense? So yeah, I feel like this might be like somewhat confusing or like when you apply it to like real data and you apply it to operations, it probably makes some more sense. Let's uh, think of a 2D example and hope that helps a little bit. Um, this is just another way to write X true, X after, uh, like write the likelihood. Uh, what we usually uh, describe this is that like x observed is distributed as a normal distribution centered at x true with some variable sequence here. It's just another way to write this down. Okay, yeah, let's work on the line example again. Uh, hope that helps a little bit. Uh, we have two parameters of interest now. The slope i and the intercept p, and we made some observation of the y, the y value of the uh, for a data point at some exact x value. So uh, for each x, we have some true value of y, and now our y, but our observation of y is noisy again. So instead of y true, we observe uh, y observation. So in this case, okay, y observed is uh, normally distributed, uh, it's distributed as normal distribution, centered as like true and based on the variable sigma sphere. And assume that we know sigma sphere, sigma or sigma, sigma is again. So um, this is just like, so x, 1d Gaussian noise problem extend to like two three parameters, right? You just like calculate for the uh, mean value of y true, and okay, the next part is saying that it's just like by people think. Okay, yeah, so in this case, like we are modeling more for time systems and operations, we only make one operation. Know that it's not like impossible to do, it's just our result real to generate. So here's like um, how we think about it. Again, our primary interest is defined, right? It's M and D. 
the uh, slope and the intercept. And we can visualize this parameters of interest theta using grid. So, and it has an infinite number of possible values. And B again has to number of possible number of values. And for on each value on this grid, we have the unique pair of M and T. Right? At each M and T, we calculate, okay, there was a by should, should be, that will be like some exact value. And our observation is by observed, we can calculate the likelihood of probability of by observed given some value and some variance. That's uh, how this works. And that's the likelihood, how the likelihood will be looked at. So, yeah, on to Connor here for a moment, uh, discuss with you, neighbor. Do this make sense? Or like why this makes sense? It's gonna slightly tricky that. Yeah. Yeah. Like why is it so do we only have ten? Yes. Right. We only have a single one. Yeah, I guess. The dark color is the dark Oh, it's a map. It's hard to see it in the space. Yes. Slow, like really high slope, that force 
to have the line pass through this one line. We are forcing the um, intercept to be a negative value. If we have, okay, um, negative, like uh, opposite slope, a really high, a really, a really low one. Then to have, uh, to have the line pass through one line, we need to have a really, really large intercept. So in that sense, the slope and uh, the intercept are strongly correlated once we have one data point in the data. But still, uh, we still have infinite number of solutions after a single data point. So this leads to uh, a correlated result here. You can try to call that during your uh, problem session to actually convince yourself it's actually not like this. And in reality, we want to make more observations. Usually the more the better until you reach to some sort of limit. If you have an observations, sorry about three data. If you have uh, an observations, then we can uh, time solve like these all together get a much screen result. For example, okay, we begin this, uh, the likelihood is one a single data point. And now we make another operation, another operation. And we times all this likelihood together. We result in some like, okay, now we screen this period. And this, uh, okay, so, here is still the likelihood we need to press the prior test. If the prior is in the first one, doesn't matter. We get some distribution, likelihood distribution of the sphere distribution. And hopefully, a, centri a uh, center of some certain region in this uh, city space. And it has like, okay, a uh, region that some big probability to have within a slightly lower probability. That's a two dimensional public distribution. And the results of those plots, like there's one type of plot called the corner plot, but actually plotting the, uh, the uh, joint distribution between two kinds of plots. It's something like this. So uh, to formalize a mass calculation of this, our likelihood here, okay, for each data point. Y upper I, given this Y I sigma, we could have the likelihood. And as Adam mentioned in the early session, earlier session, this value could be really small, right? You have like 0 0.01 times 0 0.01. And if you have a data, a hundred data points, you reach to the so smallest representable number for the double position. So what we usually do is to take the log likelihood. We just do a natural log on this because, okay, Gaussian process Gaussian distribution is like, okay, exponential, we just do a log of that. And you will result from this. So uh, this part, this two pi sigma square, we do a lot of those and don't have it here. And this exponential just go down here. Have a sigma squared. So um, that's the law of uh, likelihood, which we are talking about. And um, it's much easier to code in this way compared to that way. So um, we don't have to remember this formula in most cases. Um, uh, the, non pi the sun pi usually just do this calculation. We just call the right function. So uh, instead of calling dot PDF, you do dot log PDF. That's the log uh, probability for normal. Uh, so how do we pick priors? I didn't talk about priors at all. For our problem, if we have no, it's not like no longer like a matter of quotes anymore. Like, if you don't have any prior uh, information, we just assume, okay, 
the legal policy for each of the possible situations. Now we are dealing with this parameters. And you've learned that for fitting a line, this geometry could be weird. If we are using a uniform um, a uniform B, that would lead to some bias towards some certain solutions. Brian will talk about it tomorrow uh, on this lecture. Just want to give you a heads up. If you have a uniform um, uniform slope, then you have much more high slope, how uh, high, high slope, uh, the, the higher they will like bias towards high slope. So it's really like that. And uh, that's like the, okay, another point, how we should remember this when you are working on your own real aspect of these problems. And your uniform prior doesn't really mean any, any informative prior. So uh, you need to pick your priors in a smart way that you don't bias your data. And you don't bias the posterior and the upper out of your data. Usually, when you have like large enough data sets, the prior probably doesn't matter that much anymore. Your data is good. But when your data is bad, you have some like incorrect prior or like informative prior that you didn't even realize, then your result could be okay. You don't really fully understand what you are actually saying. That's like a situation in the tricky part of the problem. So, uh -huh, yeah. if, if the uniform, uniform prior is required, mm -hmm. is there any prior that doesn't be required? Right. Wait for a price like this. <laughs> I didn't show you that. Okay, so uh, I've talked a little bit about the joint distribution. They, here's our posterior. And it's actually uh, M and B, two, uh, two primary features, given some observation. So uh, if I want to understand, okay, what is uh, posterior of M only given the observation? Instead of P and B joint distribution given operation, I want, I'm interested in learning P and given the operation. But so we, and by the end, okay, I want to have some understanding of M, some understanding of B. The joint, the joint distribution is helpful to learn the correlation between two parameters. So, okay, I may only interested in uh, presenting one parameter in my rate in a different in my result. So how should we do that? That is called the marginalization. Could you talk to your neighbor for a minute or two? What's your thinking on dealing with this? How do you marginalize it? Yeah. 
We can express it as my holy. It's like when you see the heroes, that's like the A. E and the word Y, that's posterior, but what's posterior down, but okay, we just integrate along the direction. And okay, integration, if you uh, do discretize uh, integration, that's like the rhythm sound at each point, at each Y, they add. And if we want to marginalize, we get the posterior of B when they marginalize over A. Let's put the center of that. So, yeah, if you want to pause this, you might do the cartoonish version. The P and PB will be localizing that. So, uh, I want to end this lecture. Was introducing a concept, the grid approximation. So, what we did in this lecture when they discretize uh, prime graph features, 
such like where we are start we start to apply this great hypothesis. We are interested in learning the uh, posterior distribution of some kind of interest given data. And what we do is to define a grid for the theta value. So when we have both example, okay, the theta is just like five times four configuration. When we have the uh, observation with Gaussian noise example, we discretize our x2, the x value, to five different values, negative one, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And for our great example, um, beta line example, we uh, make a grade of uh, the slope and the intercept to a two degree. Okay. So we begin with uh, discretize, we're doing a great approximation. We build a grid, and at each possible grade value, or at each possible configuration, we calculate the uh, likelihood for that grid value. And then, uh, okay, prior, we are mostly assuming a uniform prior. Uh, if they have a non uniform prior, then at each grid, you will have a different value on the prior. You times the prior uh, to the likelihood at each total value on the grid, we get the anomalized posterior. You sum all the possible values of those of the posterior on the grid. You use that to normalize your posterior. That's your posterior distribution. So um, how we deal with those uh, Asian problems, a really intuitive way to learn it is to do, do this sort of uh, grid approximation. I found this even helpful when we were are working on a higher dimension problem. It's harder to make the grid and it's more computational uh, intensive. We can make some easy assumptions like let's fix this parameter, let's uh, make the uncertainty to all be the same value. And we do this sort of uh, grid observation to get your posterior distribution to take a look at if it makes sense or not. Just like test your Bayesian model if it works. So uh, we will work on those three problems in your problem set. Um, you will get all the results I showed you today. And at the end, you will have much better sense on uh, do you do the uh, patient inferences and do it. Thanks. Any questions for DJ? So, uh, today's lecture, the piano work and the PDF version are here. And just like if you want to review some of the material, you can find them here. And there are two notebooks. Uh, Bayes, the notebook, and Bayes solution. So uh, if you click on the solution first, then it's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's look at those first. And if you get stuck on any point, you may check on the solution part. Yeah, it's mostly like likely to be me like not explaining the problem out enough. So uh, it's a solution if it's helpful or uh, great. Or like just